Just past midnight East Coast time. I'm Scott Van Pelt. This is Ryan Clark alongside and CJ Stroud's a guy we talked about all year long on Countdown on Sports Center. Everybody talked about would he be ready for the close up, ready for this moment? Yeah. I mean, he answers in a resounding fashion, yes. And he and Nico hook up on that very first play. I know there's a lot to show us. What best illustrates sort of who this guy's becoming? Well, I think it's about the poise, the composure, but the execution in the big moments. And right. honestly, there's no bigger moment than that last drive, which he talked about, sure. where they were seven. he was seven for seven. Right. But it's also the first play. Now, think about this. This is the Houston Texans. You haven't been to the playoffs since 2019. And this is the first snap of the game. You're going to get a deep crosser here here by Dalton Schultz, and then you're going to run Nico Collins on a post route. Now, the guy that you're going to try to affect is the safety here who is playing quarters. You're going to want him to be attracted to Dalton Schultz, and if he is, you're going to throw the football over his head. Now watch. As it starts, he's going to go underneath, and so this should actually get the safety off of the coverage, but because he doesn't get off of the coverage, you're going to see if you look in the backfield, you're going to get a nod to Schultz, and then the deep throw over the head to Nico Collins. It's hit him right in stride. There's no way you stop that play in a quarters coverage like that, especially if the safety doesn't give inside help. Now, I'm going to show you something. Sometimes you get these great plays and you think to yourself, oh my God, their coach is so good. Well, this time, Bobby wasn't right or the players wasn't right. We're going to get the same route. He's going to go here. He's going to go here. This dude's going to go here. He's going to go here. We're going to have a cluster fluff that CJ Stroud is going to have to figure out. Now, when he gets in the pocket here, these dudes ain't open because these dudes is running the same route. He running this route. He running this route. I'm not sure how much football you know, but that ain't supposed to happen. But watch what C.J. Stroud does to manipulate the pocket and find Nico Collins as he's going to uncover here and streak across the field. Look at C.J. Stroud in the pocket. He backs up. He flips around. He throws the football. He leads him out. The diving catch by Nico. And then you saw already, Scott showed you, they had the great throw where he's in the pocket, stares down the barrel, hit, hits Nico across the middle. But without that play, they don't get to that point. He was brilliant on that last drive, but the missed extra point opened the door, and it meant that the Colts could win with a touchdown and yes. a made extra point. Now, Steichen's been brilliant all year as a play caller. I thought Troy did a great job on the broadcast in reminding everybody, look, they throw in these situations, I believe, the second most in the NFL. And you made a really interesting yeah. point to me about who they target in those spots. Taylor's on the sideline, but that's what is that's that, what they do? That's what they've been doing throughout the season. They throw the football, and they hit the unlikelies. Mo Alley Cox. Fourth and one, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They bring in a linebacker, Zaire Franklin, to play the fullback position. Fourth and one against the Tennessee Titans. They run a jet sweep to Kylan Granson. And then now in this game, they come out the first snap. They don't snap the football. They put somebody in motion to see what the coverage is. It was man-to-man. -man. Then you bring in Tyler Goodson, and you have the perfect pick route called. The football is a little bit behind him, and it's a missed catch. Now, here's the only pushback I will give Shane Steichen. Okay. Yep. Middle of the season against Tampa Bay, give it to Mo Alley Cox. Mm -hmm. A little bit later in the season against the Tennessee Titans early in the game, you could give it to Granson. When you get to these moments, players make plays. And if they could not stop Jonathan Taylor the whole day, you're going to have to show me that they can stop her for one yard right there. He had a 188 yards. I get that he left with a heel issue. I get that he had been on the field, and I get that he had just been stopped on third and two. But your point is, if you're about to go home, if it doesn't work, I I'm handing it to 28. Scott, I got to go home being me. That's like you decide not to do Brad, bad beats one day and mm -hmm. them taking you off the air. If they stop, if they, if they stop <laughs> happening, I promise we'll stop doing it, but they don't stop happening. I, I hear you. That's it. But it, 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 it could have worked. Almost worked. It could have worked, but when you look at it, there's always going to be hindsight is 20-20. There's course. always going to be criticism. It was the right call. He had an opportunity to make a play, but those players have to convert there, and sometimes that's why guys get paid a little bit more. And Gardner said, I'd throw it to Goody uh, over and over again. Wish I gave him a bit better ball. Man, that's a brutal way to have it go out, but uh, the Texans earned the right to play on.